this, I, I came across this very interesting um, uh, article on uh, Wikipedia knowledge, also of the Wiki uh, Mania 2012, which took place in London. I think it was a Guardian article, and the headline <laughs> was 83% uh, of the Brits yeah, trust uh, Wikipedia a lot more than the news. But the moment you've discovered, yeah, <clears throat> the moment you've discovered that there's actually a rating, yeah, you've done a, a great uh, step forward. So um, there was an announcement, Eva. There was an announcement. Hang on, Bessel. There was there was an announcement. The Skill Bazaar wanted to jump in with an announcement. If not. Yeah? If not, there's a question. No, you have to use the mic, unfortunately. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, uh, I'd just like to, to ask a question, or well, let's make, 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 make a statement to the second last speaker. Uh, in, in South Africa, lots of uh, both uh, right-wing parents as well as charismatic Christians are going as kind of autonomous education route. Um, and I've always felt that the, our only chance of society as making, making it more uh, equal is through education. And that we should go the others, in, in the other direction. Rather than allow autonomous education, we should outlaw all private forms of education and force children to go to the same schools. So, um, so yeah, so that's basically all I have to say. Uh, and also, it's not just about that. It's also, uh, it's also about, it's, it's, it's not just that some children can learn faster on their own, which causes inequality. But it's also about the connections, the social connections. I went to a school that where I had some kids that came from the docks, some kids that came from a very wealthy area. I think that's very valuable. Um, and uh, I think it's dangerous uh, not to have that. Well, you could argue. Do you want to respond? Yeah? Just. The mic will be video in a moment. Go ahead. I did briefly touch on this point. As I said, equality of outcome is not the same as equality of education. Um, one of the reasons why I am vehemently pro educational duty resting with the parents is actually to counteract that sort of matter. The vast majority of people who originally started to home educate broadly in this country, certainly post 1970s, chose to do so precisely to avoid the indoctrination of, of religion within educational circles. It was not normal in this country until the late 80s for a school-based education state or otherwise to not contain a significant religious component. Um, one of the things that you do find when you look at the statistical record, it was Paula Rogermal, by the way, from Durham. I went and looked it up. I couldn't remember her name earlier. So I hope I didn't cover that too badly. Um, Paula Rogmer, one of the things that she found in, in her PhD and in her DD, her postdoctoral research, was that the social divisions, the social makeup of home education groups was actually broader than the makeup of the areas in which those children and the schools they would then have gone, gone to was. Um, home education groups mix children by age, by colour, by religion, by other background. Because they tend to be much more numbers of people, you found that in most areas, the levels of income involved in those groups ranged from extremely poor to extremely wealthy. And indeed, you saw in those areas and in those groups that the wealthy often supported and subsidised the groups so that they were not unattended by the children within that circle and that setting who could not otherwise have afforded to do so. So certainly within the United Kingdom, where the duty of education rests with the parents and not with the state, thankfully, um, we fought a, quite a long campaign between 2002 and 2009, and indeed we only really defeated the campaign to have the outlawing of home education within this country because it fell into the wash in the election in 2010. Um, and as part of that, one of the things that we were trying to ensure was that choices within education became and stayed available for everybody else. We were very, very sure that what we would have seen with the demise of 
norms and the NGOs, of anything that wasn't otherwise. And as I said, the law defines otherwise as including private schools. We would have lost all of that sector and all of the ability of that, and indeed a lot of the ways in which a lot of children go on and access university from backgrounds that are not middle class. We have a second question over there. Sorry. Yeah, Evening, this is a one for the first element, possibly the second element. <laughs> um, essentially, um, I agree with what you're saying about autonomous education. Um, I know growing up, my parents were from a Nigerian household, as you know, they tend to push the books and they're reading, you know, you know, only you sort of get 90% of you know, where did the other 10% come from or go or whatever. So they were very strict on that. But I was just wondering, why not take it to its logical conclusion and say, not just autonomous education at the school stage, but at the tertiary education stage as well. So possibly not maybe sideline or say you don't necessarily have to go to university as a PhD, you tend to do a lot of postdoctoral research from your own anyway. Um, are you saying just autonomous at the school stage or are you saying potentially at university also you don't necessarily need that gathering of uh, you know, students if you want to? Maybe just a, a, a brief uh, response, uh, uh, Helen, and, uh, and then we'll continue with Lara's talk. I'll be much more brief this time. Um, I believe that autonomous education has a place regardless. I think if you look at the vast majority of the people in this room, particularly those who are in tech, or, or academic backgrounds. The vast majority of what we do and what we learn has not come from an attendance at an institution, whether that institution was school level or university level. 